everyone, this is Alf Ali. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing okay. So today I'm doing a bod review of Hex. Hex is basically a lovely, like, long-time viewer on my streams. And it's actually an Echo and kind of like a Zarya player. It doesn't really touch Mercy at all. But essentially, uh, he said that he was basically going to play uh, Mercy for this Flora in this match. So I'm going to have a look, uh, basically, at, uh, you know, the Mercy gameplay. This is Gold 5, so... You know, I'm just gonna like just talk about maybe some like general things. We'll see how well Hex does. Obviously, uh, Hex isn't a mercy player at all, so it might be a lot of it might be to do like movements and stuff. But we're just gonna go into it and see how Hex does. Um, we have the dragoon skin on. I actually really like the dragoon skin. Obviously, I know a lot of people don't like it. It's a bit controversial, but I I really like it. And we have the cute little like uh, Valkyrie wing charm as well, which is obviously adorable. Once again, you can get your own VOD reviews. They are for 5,000 channel points. You can simply just come on to me on Twitch and you can basically sit and you can look or obviously come and say hello to my lovely community. Um, and I stream the VODs on Mondays, but then I also stream on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays too, just of my own gameplay as well. And also just to come and like chat to all you lot. Um, so yeah, so we'll get started right now. So obviously we have ourselves a Fara, um, a Junkrat, a Kiriko and Roadhog. Um, so obviously your main damage boost, which you already know is obviously going to be a Fara. Try to look out obviously for the uh, the hog hooks where you can damage boost the hook because obviously he's lost that kind of like one shot abilities. Um, Junkrat obviously you can damage boost whenever he he's like shooting people in like short range rooms. And Kiri is kind of like there if obviously Kiri is like trying to like one v one someone maybe and you know she needs that little bit tiny bit of help. Um, so already instead of like playing very very up in the air like this, play kind of like off to the side a little bit here. This is basically so this rock kind of like blocks you because already like you kind of like ga up to where your far it is. It's putting you in range of if they have a hit. Obviously at the moment they don't have a hit scan. But if they had a hit scan then um, obviously they, what's it called? they'd all be like shooting at you basically. Um, So yeah so we'll start off. Lovely like damage boost already though which is great. Lovely positioning around here. Lovely healthy with Farah though. Just a quick tip with Parker's in Farah though, because obviously you're not very like, you know, used to um, Mercy Hex, is you can cancel the GA and essentially it will shorten the cooldown. So as soon as you like reach your Farah or reach like where you want to GA to, just quickly like cancel the GA by pressing it again or letting go, depending on like what setting you have on. Um, it means that essentially it'll allow you to quickly GA again um, whenever you need to. And it just saves the cooldown rather than like slingshotting about. Um, and just at the moment, obviously you're doing fine right now because obviously you've read like kind of like what they have and you're playing like obviously out in the open and away like very high up, which is great. You just have to be careful that ever switch to a hit scan or something. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the, the stream glitched sadly, um, so I will edit that out. Um, but essentially what's happened is, essentially, we should have uh, damage boost the Roadhog hook instead of, uh, what's it called, um, going out with the Glock there. Another thing as well, I've just noticed, like a little tiny thing, is just try not to kind of tunnel vision on the Farah. Be sure that you're like also looking round at like other people too. Nice that you've got your team with you there. Just when you go for a res, make sure you have like a nice escape route. Obviously, they still don't have a hit scan for you, so it's fine. However, you want to fly about and stuff like that. So just playing with Farah. Instead of like GA all the way to her, just literally do like play around this side of the rock. And just keep like cancelling your GA and just making sure you're, you're like still in this beam range and stuff. You know, there's no need for you to be like flying out in front of your team. All right. Just play that cover a little bit more. They have a, an echo now. Okay. Sorry, let me just quickly finish about the echo. Okay, so they have an echo. Echo doesn't like obviously fully count to Farah, but it she can be like very, very strong with essentially just diving onto her with like stickies and everything. Um, So I would kind of like play a little bit more like cover now, now they have that echo, just purely because obviously Instead, say, obviously, if you're playing up with the Farah, it means that essentially they can go focus you, especially if, like, a, a good and smart Echo, they will go for you instead of the Farah. Um, but, yeah, and then, obviously, so the Farah ends up dying, and you end up kind of, like, jing out here to the, the junk rat. 
when you do that, you could press jump again and you can like slingshot yourself back. It kind of like stops you from being like hung about here. So I'll quick, I'll rewind it. Just kind of like show you what I mean. So obviously playing, play with Fora. Like I said, instead of like coming forwards and GA around, GA around the rock, just like literally walk back and then go around. Obviously helping her, so that she ends up getting stuck out. This is this is the part where I mean, right? So you end up GAing to the Fora. When you do this, instead of just like not like, you know, just like standing here and just like letting the GA play out. And obviously you end up, what's it called? Like hanging about here. GA to someone, like use someone here. Or like, sorry, you're already in the GA, but like use the jump to like slingshot yourself backwards. So you've already GA to the Farah, just literally press press your jump and just slingshot yourself back like around here because it means you can still help the Junkrat, you can still have your beam on the Junkrat, but it doesn't mean that you're now basically like stood, what's it called, in the LOS of everyone there. Um, make sure you stick your blue beam, yeah. I was just about to say, make sure you stuck your blue beam on the jump crack when he's full HP, but you do end up getting kind of like stuck out and dying there. And I think it's just purely because you didn't know, like, you know, that you could basically just like use the jump to slingshot yourself backwards. That's the far obviously waiting for you. And obviously, you know, it's now going to be like a team fight reset. Okay. In this kind of scenario, you're not going to be able to help your echo, right? Because uh, I would have literally just stayed back here and stayed with your, um, your Farah because right now you're putting yourself into a very vulnerable scenario to try and save someone that got dove upon by like three or four people right as soon as you see like someone getting dove upon like that with the mercy damage boost and stuff you know that they're not gonna be able to be saved and you literally just have to kind of like let them die sadly and just kind of like wait for a fight team like you know like a team excuse me like a team reset so essentially you just have to what's it called just sit here like with the Farah and damage boost here like behind this rock here um so as you do end up going backwards Back to where this is where you should have been playing just then. Lovely flicks onto the damage boost though. Oh, okay. This this should have like not been a res here. This should essentially have just been um like just to get out. I don't know why if your far went in to be fair. I just feel so like, um like she shouldn't have gone in here like at all because none of your team is like fully back yet. Um if if you ever do have it like that, we feel like a, a DPS is committed into something that you don't feel like you can survive like literally just play it play it a lot safer and don't like fully fully commit just try and like stay at the max beam and maybe like just like play down here and then if they do fall over then you can just like go back like this all right this is what you should have done when she died right you should have literally just like let her like go and then got out right because you know your team's going to be here so once again you can use this orb that was falling to either like super jump yourself up onto this high ground or like do another like slingshot away basically get yourself to your team and then if your team makes space towards the end of like this timer on the res, you can then go for this res. However, sadly, you do end up dying to get this res off. Now she has barrage, so she can maybe do something with the barrage. Never mind, she dies, so she can't do anything with the barrage. But it's it basically makes this team fight very like bad for your team now because it makes it a 4v5. Sorry, a 3v5 even. It could have maybe been a 4v5, but your joke gets two though, which is great. Love how you wait for your Farah right here. Just the same thing again instead of just like looking around just like genuinely while you're in the air like this with your farah like it's great that you are with your farah but try to look at your team while it's still happening because look we have this hog that's like still quite weak i know obviously he has the kiriko with uh, him and stuff like that and obviously your junkrat's kind of like okay but obviously say for instance like your kiriko wasn't here and your hog was like quite low hp you don't have LOS of him right now. You're just, like just wandering about like at this sky level here. So just be sure like while you're still with this Farah in the sky, you're just still like kind of paying attention to your team. Um, but it's all good. Obviously a little damage boost. Nice heals. While well, Diva's got the DM up, that's really, really great. Same thing again, just don't get out of the block there and just like help with the damage boost. And it's the same thing again, just try and cancel your GA around that rock. So overall, so far, Hex, um, I feel so like your general like game knowledge is good. You know when to damage boost on this um, Farah, which is like really, really great. It's just your like, what's it called? Your mechanics, I feel like. Because there's like certain points where like you could do like a tech, which I don't know whether like you don't know or you don't really know like how to do that well. Um, Which is kind of like getting you stuck out in like little places and stuff. 
Um, it's the same thing though, but you don't really need to do a GA though, because you're still in that beam range. Okay, we get the block out. Nice. I wouldn't have valked here, I'm going to be very, very honest. I don't really do anything to do with Mercy. No, it's alright, Hex. Honestly, you, you've got the good gist about it, which is great, of obviously, you know, staying with the far and stuff like that. It's literally just because, obviously, you don't really know about anything, like, about the mechanics and stuff. But overall, like, to say that you don't really know anything about Mercy, you're doing really, really well so far, honestly. This this Valk, however, this is like a, you don't need to Valk here. You want to kind of Valk when they push in a little bit more and start pressurizing your team. But say your far is like still over here, right? So you could use your Valk and kind of like play it back here. But at the moment, you've Valked a little bit too early. I love the kill on the, um, what's it called? The far, though, which is great because obviously, you know, you have good aim and stuff. As proven again there. Go on. Might as well go for another. Okay, yep. Love that you backed out as soon as you knew you could get the kill, though. I see way too many mercies of, like, every single rank, including myself, like, get way too carried away with the Glock and, like, still trying to go in a lot more. But you did the absolute right thing, though. I feel like you're a little bit trigger-happy with the Glock. Just, you know, try to what's called. Try not to be so trigger-happy. Just same thing, we're trying to use your cover a little bit more. Just because this, um... This what's it called? This odd is very DPS-y. Lovely keeping out in the air though, away from the Genji, which is great. My only thing is I would have peeled for this Kiriko here, okay? Because once again, it's the same thing where you have a bit of tunnel vision on this Farah. You could like, still kind of like stay gliding in the air and help your Kiri. I feel as though you had your Valk still, this would have been like a Valk moment as well. But, you know, we have to like play as we've got it, we've already used the Valk. So you could have like, kind of like still like stay like hovering in the air using like the Angelic Descent, which you can use by holding, uh, on, con on console at least, I know you could hold like your jump, your crouch and res. I'm unsure about the res on PC. Um, so if people could let me know about that as well, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, so you can literally just like hover in the air and keep your beam on this Kiri. I don't know if it would have helped because obviously, you know, got the damage boost on. But at least it like maybe would have helped to stay up for a little bit longer to get a Zuzu off or be able like to TP away from someone basically. Um, but it's all good. Lovely peel for the junk rat. You should have not got away with this res. I'm going to be very, very honest. Like, this, this res was such a risky res because you, you're you going down into, like, where basically all the enemies are. Like, you have this dps -E order, you have the um the diva down here as well. Like, you should have died for this res, basically. It's quite quite a miracle that you got it off. I would have literally just kind of helped the Junkrat out and then just backed away to go, like, be with your Farah or be with, like, your... Um... If I know your Farah ends up dying while you do this. Hold on. Is it while you res? Cause, so this is a very... Not a great res, I'm going to be honest. So obviously helping far, which is nice. So as soon as this blade comes out, instead of like, um, obviously tunnel visioning onto your far here, and like, I feel as though it's just like a generic movement thing, um, where you, you kind of like waste the cooldown again of like the GA by, you know, like doing all this. You could have literally just like dropped down and what's it called? Um... Grab it. I don't think it doesn't work when holding res for PC. Thank you for letting me know. Yes. That must be just a console thing. Um, but yeah. Thank you for letting me know. Um So yeah, so you could just like have have it onto this carry, but it's fine. She ends up dying. Okay, that's fine. I, I love how you peel for the junk right here. This is great. But then as soon as you've got it up to like a little bit like healthier, you should now be looking for your Farah and going back and um helping helping her basically. Because you basically end up letting your Farah die while you get off this risky res. And then it's just you you end up like trying to G out and obviously you end up get, getting caught. Which is unfortunate. But it's fine. See if we can like go and contest it. You jump has doing pretty well. I'd unfortunately end up pushing it in. But it's fine. It's all good. Let's see what we can do now. Lovely damage boost again. A way to for his like to reload to heal. Absolutely amazing. Okay, there I would have used the crouch super jump. If you basically if you don't know, 
when you like GA to someone, you can press crouch at any point during the GA and it can like send you vertically upwards. It basically means that you can now like make height away from this Genji while still staying with the Sparrow. So what you could do is you can like jump up here and it means that you can essentially just play, play more like this side, like around the rock. So you can like still help your Farah and stuff. But at the same time, you're not going to be able like to be shot by this Genji or by this, um, this what's called this Diva right now. Lovely back out though to the Kiri. I would have then literally just taken a quick small break. Like you either take a quick small break with your Kiri to allow your Kiri to heal you up. Or you take a quick small break over here. Like just fly over to this, this kind of like barrier here. Let the self regen kick in for a few seconds to get a little bit of HP. And then you could go back with your Farah. Like your Farah will be fine for like a few seconds if you're not going to like be with her and stuff. But your Kiri ends up healing you which is really really nice. Same thing with like the GA like council. You could have literally just stayed on that high ground again and she's like a GA council. Okay, when we Valk, especially against hit scans and stuff like that, I'd um I feel as though this was an okay Valk if you kind of like focused it a little bit more like on your team and stuff like that. Uh, but instead you kind of like use it just to kind of like stay with your follower and then obviously get the Glock out and stuff like that. But when you're doing Valks um try to kind of like use your cover still a little bit more specifically against like hit scans and stuff because you being up in the air like this and also mercy's hitbox kind of increases out a little bit in valk it basically means that you essentially are just like making yourself like a free punching bag up in the air kind of thing try to kind of use your valk behind the covers like this like say for instance you want to play it here so it means you can flick it in between your farah when she engages and then help the team out as well you could basically just kind of like sit like this basically all right um, but we end up getting the kill on the Genji. Back out, obviously, when you lose HP, which is really, really nice. Same thing again, where it's like you can just duck behind this, like, bit of rock bit here, basically, instead. So you're not, like, in full LOS and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't mind the Glock there, because it's, it's something I would do, like, towards the end of a team fight there. Um, so, yeah, so overall, I cannot fault you on, like, your damage boost again. Like, your damage boost and healing onto the Farah and your pocketing as well is really, really good, okay? We, obviously, it's the movement and res at the moment that I feel as though we need to work on a little bit, but we'll keep on looking at the rest of the VOD to see what else happens. Again, it's like scenarios like this where you can, like, just literally stand on top of here instead, like, like over here, for example instead of like being hung like this is like really like max range right now so you can literally just like sit up here and then if obviously they start shooting you could just like play down here keep your beam attached so you could do like a small like wall bounce like ga like up here to kind of like stay with her and stuff um but it's all good obviously now they have this double hit scan so now you really want to be playing this cover a lot more lovely hit like i love your beam juggle there that was such a good beam juggle of staying with the Farah for the initial barrage. They go to go and help the hog and then go back to the Farah. Really, really good. Like, I cannot fault you on your beam management. Like, you know, like, when you need to res and damage boost, which is great. Um, so, I was I cannot fault you on that. So, back to damage boost in Farah. Obviously, it helped top up the hog, which is nice. Okay. When you're high, when you're Farah, because at the moment, your Farah will want to hide because normally what happens is everyone will just like attack on this high ground it's very rare that people will come under right so with you kind of attaching your beam right now it basically if people are walking like you know if they're coming past they can see this beam glow and also there's a slight noise of the beam so whenever like stuff like this happens and you, it looks like your far is like wanted to hide be sure to like drop your beam and uh what's it called just um uh, like crouch down as well to like mute your mute, mute your footsteps sorry that's what i'm trying to say um because, yeah, obviously, you're, at the moment, you're kind of, like, revealing your position a little bit. But luckily, you didn't have seen, which is nice. I still, yeah, still stay with your Farah. Once she starts shooting, then, of course, you can you can reveal her position. Because they're going to know, like, where she is and stuff. Okay, when you see the hog anti like this and when he's, like, slept and being stunned like all this, there's literally nothing you could do for me here. So you just have to kind of, like, leave him. So instead, I would just go, like, just to what's called to damage boost this Farah here. And just kind of like stay with her in that scenario. But it's all good. Okay, you end up following your Farah. Nice res. You did very well to avoid that bomb, to be fair. You end up just like following the Farah. Nice kill as well. 
I just want to say we used tire barriers at the end of the round, so it's okay. Um, and yeah, so that's the end of the first round. So overall hex, um, really, really good beam management for the majority of the time. Like, like knowing like who you need to heal and damage boost and stuff like that is great, especially on your Farah. Okay. I loved at the beginning how you're like playing very out in the, the open and stuff, obviously, you know, and like away from the ground because obviously they had no hit scans, but it's just adapting your play style a little bit more when obviously they, they start to get people like hit scans and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just use cover. Yeah, use your cover a little bit more. And the second thing is kind of like learning when to res and stuff like that as well. Because um, I feel as though a lot of the moment you're resing people like when it's not safe to. Like that last one was a really good example of when it was safe because you have the far that's able to spray people out and give you that cover. Um, but obviously there was the other two reses where you ended up doing them with like no team help or like any kind of cover basically. Uh, but it's all good. We'll just skip it forward a little bit. And we'll keep going. So, where are we playing right now? Okay, so your, your far is playing very out in the open. And I don't think your beam kind of... Oh, you, I think it's like you can. You can kind of like play like very, very max range. Like all the way down here maybe. Just once again, you're very kind of like out in the open. Um, but it's all good. Just like, yeah, as soon as she kind of like drops down like that, you kind of like want to drop down with her. So at the moment you're holding angelic descent quite a quite a bit especially when it's like around here if you see your far a drop just let go of like your jump button or like whatever button you're using for angelic descent just literally let go of it it'll allow you to kind of like fast fall a little bit more and then you can like kind of catch yourself and play around here a little bit more okay um but keep going same thing where you can kind of like use a council ga just to kind of play all this high grounds and stuff it's all good Lovely peel for the tracer. I don't think you could really do anything for your flower there, but ni nice res. Because unfortunately, she just ends up like, you know, like diving in basically. Instead of like doing like this, like backwards GAs quite a lot, I did obviously say this before you can cancel your GA, but literally, when it's like scenarios like this where you've taken control of this section of the map, which is obviously like this high ground, you can just stand up here. Like, you can literally just stand here, just put your blue beam on this far and just let the far like do the work here because there's nobody um to dive you up here because they have like they literally have nobody that can that like if they had the diva still obviously i'd still be like a little bit aware obviously standing up here but they don't have that diva anymore they literally just have the sigma so as long as you're playing so the sigma can't get a rock to you and you're playing like very kind of like centrally you can like stand here just with a blue beam on your farah and just you know sit and basically not so much basically do nothing but you know it just allows you just to feel like a little more chilled Lovely health as well, Hog. I love that as well. He help, letting your Moira heal up the Hog. At least I hope that she's gonna do. Yeah, she does end up healing with the healing orb, which is great. Obviously, it's great to kind of like give your other support its ult charge because obviously, I'd say the majority of support ults are a lot better. Don't don't go for that res. Okay, nice nice aim to be fair. Okay, my only thing is that you ended up kind of putting yourself in a very vulnerable scenario because, so you'll know, obviously, this this tracer has died to the cast. So you know this cast is still going to be there. You going up to try and res this is essentially be giving cast like a free, what's it called? A free kind of like hit, basically. Um, So instead, what you want to be doing is you kind of like want to just kind of like play it safe until your echo will dive the, what's it called? the cast you then basically go in with the damage boost you will like go and help attack and then if you do end up getting the cast then you can go like behind this wall or something and go and rise okay uh but we we'll keep going obviously nice aim like i kind of fault kind of you on your aim same thing again we just cancel the ga it's all good This is another scenario where you don't need to Valk here. Like, you're you're absolutely fine just playing with your Farah here. And as soon as, like, because you haven't passed it through these gates yet, so you can still, like, play it all the way back, back here. Obviously, if the payload had pushed a little bit more forward, you could play in here. Like, there's, um, you, whenever you want to Valk, you want to try and use your Valk to either help when a team is engaging into your team or the you're trying to engage into the enemy team. And you try to do it, like, quite early on but not like really really early on in the team fight 
just kind of provide that support. Right now, you only can support two people because your hog isn't with you and your trace isn't with you. And oh, another thing as well I like to use Valk for is my own like survivability sometimes if I get into like a bad scenario and I need the GA reset. But this is like none of them scenarios right now. You kind of like want to basically just play down here. And if the Sigma does end up pushing you a little bit more, then you could pop the Valk. Uh, but we'll keep on seeing what happens. And I'll see if I can find like a good scenario when the Valk. So it's helping far, which is nice. Obviously we have visor, okay. Lovely, lovely use of cover away from that visor. That's how you need to be playing like all the time though, using that cover, okay. Very, very nice though. Oh, okay, far gets slept. What are we gonna do, okay. Whenever your far gets slept like this, and she's very like kind of like safe go and go and help someone else if if you damage boost this tracer now or like just anyone else basically you can literally like how is is that a two? Oh, he must have literally got knocked with a rock i was like there's two people sleeping that he's probably got like knocked with a rock or something um yeah so you when when your echo is kind of sorry when your far is sleeping like this it's essentially she can't do anything so you want to be going forward and you want to be helping your team out some other way so you could damage boost the tracer for example or you can maybe like go and heal the hog right just to kind of like help out the team fight a little bit more because right now you're stood kind of like doing nothing really lovely damage is not hot on the hog sorry on the hog hook that's what i'm trying to like get out right now and yeah you're winning the game so overall hex i really really love your um your damages and healing like you know like doing that specific on the flora it's really really good like you know when to damage boost when to heal all that kind of stuff it's great okay things you kind of like need to work on is obviously your your general mercy mechanics because obviously you don't really know like how to play mercy but if you try like to learn like the even though just the basics of her kit can work really really well with flora's so working with flora's you essentially want to know obviously slingshotting you want to know about cancelling your ga so you can like play behind covers and stuff you did really, really well at the beginning, obviously playing high up, but then as soon as you know you've got their hit scans, you just need to play that cover a little bit more. Reses, we did go for some very risky reses, so it's, it's just kind of like reading the room and knowing like if it's safe to res. And I have a full like res guide on my TikTok if you like want to like delve more into like when to res and stuff like that. But just try to think when you go for a res, am I going to survive this just before you do it? Um, and then just with your Valk once again, just try and like play that cover a little bit more. Um, but overall, really, really strong VOD hex. Um, and obviously, if you want to play some more Mercy, I will gladly do another VOD for you in the future and hopefully see you climb up to maybe like Plat or Diamond or something. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for everyone that stuck around on Twitch and obviously same on YouTube as well. Once again, you can get your own VOD views. They offer 5,000 channel points and I do them on Mondays on my Twitch. Um, and I also stream on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays for you guys to also rack up some points or watch me as well play. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all later. Bye!